Hi everyone, my name is Mathieu. In this tutorial, I'll explain you a bit more about going from a 3D printed part to a carbon fiber part. So we'll go through some steps, making the molds, then we'll proceed by making the part itself. So we'll be using some carbon fiber and using the resin infusion technique to create a good part. After that, we'll finish everything. So I'll show you all the steps of the sanding in detail and then this process can be like duplicated as well on bigger parts so the system is the same but for like this tutorial I'll keep it simple on this smaller parts so as you can see here all the finishes and the molds process is identical to the one in this tutorial so the part was 3d 3d printed so I did it in two parts um, glued them together and then used um, this uh, bondo to finish the edges uh, of the print so this was printed on a 0.2 layer height and like if you 3d print you know that you'll get layer lines causing like the little edges that you get so how do we solve that we just add some bondo and then flatten everything back again so this was the first step that i did in this tutorial so it's off camera but I think you should be able to understand the process of doing so. So if you like my projects and want to stay up to date, make sure to follow me on Instagram as well. I post daily about future projects to come and get you notified about new videos being uploaded. So as for the first step, this is my favorite primer. So this is one of my favorite products from Easy Composites. So it's a pattern primer. It's a polyester primer that it's filled with something i don't know what but it's easy to apply uh, by brush or by spray gun and then it's curing quite quickly and it's very easy to sand so while the pattern coat is still wet i remove the uh, tape just to avoid having too much like tripping off the sides because i want to keep the shape as good as possible then you're able to sand with a 120 grit so this only took about five minutes uh, a cool thing also is that the pattern coat has a darker color and when you sand it it goes to a light gray so you're able to see where the light spots are um, that still need to be sanded so i added a second coat on the second coat i sand with a 220 up to higher grit if needed so this is the result you see like the dots you see is where the uh, first layer and the second layer intersect like um, where i sand it through them uh, a good thing to know is that you can add some tinting pigments to your second coat so you see when you're going through your first coat and uh, know where to stop to sand uh, through and eventually add some more pattern code if needed. So for the mold, we'll be using the Unimold system. So everything starts with the tooling gel coats. It, this will be the black surface that you'll see on the mold. So about 150 grams is used here. Um, just try to apply it in an even way. So you get like um, an even layer all over your part. I do this by going uh, in a horizontal wave and then vertical way. Um, over the part so mostly i do the gel coat at night and then i'll wait uh, till the morning so about eight hours that way i'm sure it's cured enough uh, because otherwise you can get some print through of uh, this layer coming on top so we're using the coupling coat that will make a good bond in between the gel coat and the tooling uh, resin coming on top of this so i'm using a roller just to make sure that i remove all the air bubbles and uh, evenly put the coupling coats all over the part so for the first part we used a 100 gram square meter for the second like the finishing coat being the unimol tooling resin we'll use a 400 grams in uh, chop strands in four layers so firstly uh, i apply a layer of resin on top of the coupling coat then add the fiberglass and then go over everything with the roller just to make sure that the resin is evenly dispersed all over the place or all over the part I mean and then I just use the roller again to finish everything and then the day after or eventually after a post cure in the oven you're able to trim the edges because otherwise this would be very hard to remove so the edges are removed and then thanks to the good release agent we are able to demold the part So by using wedges, I'm able to go in between the layers of the base plates and the mold. And here we have it. So 
take note that the finish of your mold will have the, exactly the same finish as from the pattern you're using so the, the plug of the master um, and so minor scratches are still visible so a good thing is to polish the molds afterwards so you go through some sanding so i'm using some sandpaper as you can have seen like um, going from a coarse to a finer grit finished by some polishing so is it that important to have like super glossy molds in this case not i'll be sanding the part after eventually you might even use some clear coats to have some good uv stabili stability uh, onto um, onto the parts so to prevent it from yellowing so i'm going to go for a, a polished mold so i go till 100 crits uh, wet sanding and then use the two polishing compounds with a soft and a hard uh, polishing pad so leaving us with the results you'll see here uh, so this is a good finish you can go even higher till it 2000 grit or even 3000 for a part like this it doesn't really matter normally if you go till 500 you should be okay with some molds uh, for use so um, the next step is again so the release agents if you're not using the release agents your part will get stuck um, so it's very important to use a release agent I apply five layers I do not buff it off in between the layers um, and just let it dry 15 minutes in between and then one hour uh, before doing the layup uh, to make sure that all the um, materials into that release agent cast off and only the release is uh, left onto the mold so for the vacuum bag i've used um so for the part i've used a 650 grams carbon fiber with a 300 biaxial um, in between followed by a 600 grams again uh, then obviously you need the peel ply so the peel ply will enable you to remove the infusion mesh that is on top of that uh, so the infusion mesh will make it possible for the resin to flow through your part um, and then we have the resin in and resin out channels followed by the vacuum bag so i make sure i have a perfect vacuum uh, there is no need to do an infusion if you still have leaks because it will cause a lot of problems um, and then I'm using the IN2 infusion resin uh, with some fast and slow hardener mixed um, into it so here's the thing so the infusion um, you'll see me travel with the clamp just to make sure that the uh, infusion is not, not, not going too fast because this is a main problem with pinholes um, so it goes over the first layer like the top layers but the resin is not going at the same speed at the mold side uh, layers so this is mostly causing some uh, air being trapped causing some pinholes so this is the way to go uh, at the end i close it with two clamps just to make sure there's no leak on the clamp i had it in the past so from now on i always use two clamps uh, to make sure that everything is curing overnight in a full vacuum so no um, air is going into the part because this will cause some problems with the finish of your parts so after 24 hours um, with a post cure uh, i post cure it at 50 degrees uh, you're able to remove the parts if you're not post curing it means that your part will only be stable till the temperatures it's hardened at so at room temperature 50, uh, 25 degrees um, if you put it in the sun the part might warp or, or gets like softer um, so we have a good finish out of the molds uh, for this tutorial i'll be um, like polishing the part sanding and polishing the part till like that metallic look that you'll find on the kunitsek uh, cars like it's i think it's called metallic carbon or something because it has that like high um reflection of light uh, onto the onto the fibers so for the sanding and finishing of the parts i'm using the permagrid tools these are very good tools um, they last a long time you could also do this by sanding it with 80 grit on a sanding block uh, just to straighten all the edges and cut off everything that wasn't um, cut off used by uh, the dremel so for the finish uh, we'll start with a coarse grit 
this might be weird um, if you're not used to it but like you want to remove the first layer of epoxy like the surface layer and sand into the fibers if you're looking for that glossy like that refraction of uh, a metallic carbon fiber look so you sand through the first layer and then you go through the other like sanding steps to go to a highly polished part so this is the result at the end so how do you know if a part was infused you'll see all the layers like the carbon fiber being pressed onto the top um, so this is how we got this look so once again here in the sun a very special effects of having carbon fiber look like this if you're using a gel coat you won't get that effect um, so that's about it for this video i hope you liked it make sure to subscribe leave a like um, and i'll see you guys in the next one thanks for watching